Hello everybody, in this Rhino video demo, I would like to show how we can very easily create this kind of fancy looking coil. Okay, let's start. Let's begin by drawing the base shape, which is a circle, and I reckon I'm going to use this. Circle center radius method. I'm going to turn on the grid snap, this being my center. And this is the radius. Okay, the next thing I need to do is to find out the length of this curve. And I can do so by typing the length command at the prompt. Then select the curve. Press enter. The length is approximately 251 millimeters. And now I need to draw a straight line corresponding to that length. And that straight line will be the basis for establishing the length of the coil. And I reckon the easiest way to draw a straight line is to start by creating a point. I'm going to place the point maybe somewhere here. And then with the gumball enabled, click on the point and then click on this dot which is the extrude function. And then type in our curve length value which is uh, 251 approximately. Press enter. Then we get like this curve. Or straight line that's corresponding to the length approximately of this circle and this is going to be the basis for establishing the length of our coil okay and we can start to create the coil by using the helix command which is part under the curve toolbar which is this icon over here you click on it and then um, now it asks for the start of the axis Make sure that object snap, the end snap is turned on. And then establish this as the first end, which is the start axis. And then the end of the axis is here. And I think let's establish the number of turns to let's say 16, or maybe 18. Okay, enter. And I want to visually uh, see the result by moving the mouse cursor. something like that now the next thing i need to do is to have this coil wrap around this circle and we can do so by using the flow along curve command which is up under here you can press and hold and pull out to get the deformation tools toolbar and it's this icon over here flow along curve or you simply can type flow at the command prompt you click on it and then proceed to follow its instruction it prompt me to select the object to follow along curve so this is going to be the object enter when done and the base curve select near one end this straight line is the base curve okay and let's select it at this end and now it prompt me for the target curve select near matching end so the target curve is going to be this circle and i want the matching end to be here okay so now we got this curve or rather the coil that has been wrapped around this uh, circle and I want to make sure that the result is a periodic one by typing make periodic at the command prompt okay and then select this coil press enter delete input yes delete input enter. okay so now this is periodic now we can proceed to create the cross section of the coil and it's going to be a star shaped object and I'm going to use the polygon star method to create it okay so let me I repeat this it's going to be here press and hold pull out this toolbar and it's this icon here the number of uh, sides Let's just leave it as 9. I'm going to establish the center as let's say here. Mm, the star is like too pointy. I want it to be more rounded in terms of looks. So uh, I'm going to type the rebuild command and rebuild this curve to that of degree 2 and make sure that the number of uh, 
control points is sufficient to create the shape. Okay, I reckon I can just stick to 36. Okay, 36. And then I click OK. The distribution of the control points seems fine to me. Okay, now before I do anything, let's just scale this smaller so that we can have it sweep better. Okay, so I can select this and pressing holding the shift key, scale it down smaller. Maybe something like that. Okay. And the next thing I need to do is to let me just move this closer so you can see better. The next thing that I need to do is to place this section on the coil in a perpendicular manner. And we can do so by using the orient perpendicular to curve command, which is parked under here in the transform toolbar is this icon over here let me repeat this is here this icon orient perpendicular to curve I'm click on it now ask me slide object to orient it's this enter and it asks for the base point the base point is the location of this object that will be uh, placed onto the target curve so the base point in this case here is going to be here. Oops. The base point, I want it to be the center. Unfortunately, um, the object snap center is not able to find the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center by establishing the boundary and then from the boundary, find the center. So I'm going to type the bounding box. Okay, so yeah, the bounding box can be used to establish the, the center. Okay, so let's uh, repeat the command again. Okay, but before that, make sure that the object snap the center is turned on. And it's this command again orient perpendicular to curve. Select object orient is this. Enter base point. Okay. Going to use the, the bounding box to establish the center by hovering close to the edge of this bounding box, and you can see that it's established the center for us. Click on this, and then now it asks for the orientation curve. So this is going to be the orientation curve. So I'm going to place it like maybe maybe here. Okay, I want the file to be created in such a way that it is more or less uh, parametric to a certain extent in the sense that if I were to change the scale or size of this cross section the resultant form will correspondingly be updated okay and I reckon I can try to do that by clicking the record history before I execute the next command I'm not sure whether it will or not but uh, let's just try so I'm going to click the record history and then proceed to execute the sweep one rail so select rail so this will be my rail this will be my sweep shape press enter enter one more time and yeah we got our final shape okay yeah so we got the shape here and as mentioned i want to see whether by changing the scale of this section, will, will the form be updated or not? So I'm going to select this and let's scale this. I'm going to press and hold the shift key. Make this bit bigger. Yeah, the form has been updated. So to a certain extent, this is parametric. With that, I come to the end of this demo. Hope that's been useful. See you. Bye.